Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, today's lesson is about simplifying radicals. Now, the idea here is that when we're working with radicals, um, when we are doing some calculating, working with, say, um, squares or even right triangles or anything that ends up with a answer that's like this, radical 32 or square root of 32, um, what we can do is put 32 in our calculator and just crank it out and get an answer. For example, that one would be 5.8. And it's going to be a long decimal that doesn't really repeat, goes forever, and we'll probably have to round it. Um, but I believe it's something like this, 5.65685 and so on. Okay, now that's sort of the approximate answer. It's almost 5.5, a, a little over 5.5. So if you multiply that number by itself, you'll get 32, or at least close. Now, what we want to do is I'll show you here how to simplify the radical. That means that this number on the inside of the radical symbol, the square root symbol, here it's 32, here it's 2. Now, it's kind of like reducing a fraction. You want to reduce or simplify the number that's inside the radical. Now, believe it or not, 4 radical 2, or 4 times radical 2, is about the same as what we got over here. Okay? So, let's say we took the 4, and then we on our calculator we did the square root of 2. Well, if you work that out, it's about 1.414421 and so on. It goes forever. Now, if we multiply that by 4, guess what? These two answers would be the same. All right? But it's considered proper form to write an answer simplified with a smaller number inside the radical. So that's the idea. That's what we mean by simplifying radicals, similar to simplifying fractions. Now the idea is that in order to simplify a radical, you need to find perfect square numbers. All right, so let's say that we square 1. 1 squared is 1. Okay, that's the smallest perfect square number. What if we square 2? Obviously, that would be 4. So 4 is considered another perfect square number. 3 squared would give us our next one, which is 9. And then we'd have 4 squared, 5 squared, and so on. All right, now you be, need to be able to recognize those, uh, in fact, even memorize them, uh, or be able to come up with them in your head very quickly because that's going to be the key to simplifying radicals. So on the left, I have a list of perfect square numbers up to 49, but of course, sometimes we'll have to go past that. Notice how this is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on, up to 7 squared, which gives you 49 and beyond. So those are the numbers you just really need to have handy in your head. As we simplify radicals, we're going to look for those kinds of factors and numbers. So for square root of 20, Think about what times what gives you 20, what are the factors of 20, looking for something off the perfect square numbers list. And I think right away you'll notice that there's a 4. So 4 times 5 gives us 20. Now this step here that I'm writing, um, you don't have to necessarily write it, but I want you to be able to think of it. And that is a rule of radicals, a property, is that if there's two numbers multiplied inside of a radical, we can actually split and give them their own radical symbol. In other words, we can take the square root of 4, which we know is 2, and then we can take the square root of 5. Now, don't make it a decimal, because we're going to write things in simplified radical form. So, if, you, if it's not a perfect square factor number, it stays in the radical. Leave it the same. 2 radical 5 would be the same as if we just took the square root of 20. All right? So, radical 40, or square root of 40. What times what gives you 40? Well, 8 times 5, but those aren't perfect square numbers. How about 4 times 10? Yep. So look on that list on the left and choose one of those numbers. Now we know that the square root of 4 is going to be um, a nice number for us. Square root of 10 is not. Okay, so that's going to stay in our radical. 
Now what do I have next to square root of 10 or radical 10? Well, radical 4 is 2. So it's 2 times the square root of 10. Notice I do not put the dot right there. We just throw them together. All right, when two things are squished together in algebra, that shows multiplication. So can you do the next two? What's 75? Oh, yes, 25 times 3. Okay, now I'm going to leave out this middle step because we should be able to go quickly to the next one, which is square root of 3, and the square root of 25 is 5. So our final answer there, simplified radical, 5 radical 3. All right, now this next example is very common when we're simplifying radicals. We already have a multiplier number 3 on the outside, but the radical 12 needs to be simplified. So we need to think of that as a 4 times 3, because 4 is a perfect square number. And so then we have 3 times, what's the square root of 4? That's right, 2. Now that's going to be outside the radical. And then we still have a radical 3. All right, now we put it all together. And notice how the two outside numbers get multiplied here to give us 6. And then it's times radical 3, so just squish it together. 6 radical 3. So when you're simplifying radicals, you just need to look for those perfect square number factors for the number on the inside. All right, I hope that helps. Good luck. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.